Well, it is the dawn of another winter season. And with that, the question always comes up, will it be a cold and snowy one? If history is a guide, perhaps not so fast. Let's check back in with Chief Meteorologist Chris Vickers for this year's winter weather outlook. Well, the data is in and over the past several weeks, we've been analyzing what it means for our winter season. And before the first real snowflakes of the season begin to fall, the question is, will we have another bleak winter with snowfall or will the snow begin to pile up across Northwest Ohio and Southern Michigan? This is going to be your WTOL 11 winter weather outlook. And the data is clear on one thing in particular. The phenomenon known as El Nino is going to be firm in the driver's seats and controlling much of our wintry weather. And for those that are looking for snowfall, those hopes may very well be melting away to another bleak winter of snow. So what does the data say about this? So El Nino is going to be the biggest impact of our winter weather season. What that is, it is warmer than average equatorial Pacific waters off the coast of South America. Bottom line is that alters the global circulation, typically resulting in a more active subtropical jet stream which goes across the southern tier of the United States. With that as well, the polar jet stream, which we typically look for for colder air and for winter storms, is more frequently bottled up up into Canada. We'll have much more on that in the coming moments as well, but we're going to start with that number one driver, which is El Nino. And again, that is the warmer than average equatorial Pacific waters off the coast of South America. We expect that this year may be a strong to potentially a historically strong El Nino pattern. With that more active subtropical jet stream, storm systems that would stack up off the Pacific coast would more likely be going across the southern tier of the country. That would allow mild Pacific air to come through the Pacific Northwest into the Northern Plains, and yes, right here into the Great Lakes region. A typical El Nino winter is warmer than average for our area. How about the polar jet stream, though? That's what's responsible for more winter storms with that bottled up north of us, we're more likely to experience drier than average conditions through the course of an El Nino winter. So let's tie this all together. We're very confident that we're going to be seeing an El Nino winter. It brings together drier than average conditions, mild wintry weather, it's all with all, which ultimately results in less than average snowfall across the area. So where do we stand with this? Because we've been analyzing the data over the past several months. We've got a 55% chance of a strong El Nino and an outside chance, about a one in three chance where it could be a historically strong El Nino season. Now with anything, there's always a wild card with this. And one thing that when I dive into the data, I'm looking at that developing El Nino and bottom line is what if it doesn't turn into a strong El Nino and we're seeing some signs that weaker trade winds that should have developed at this point have yet to do so. That is something we will monitor through the course of the wintry season. So let's set the stage on what we typically see through the course of a winter. We average about 37 inches of snowfall. The heart of that typically falling in the months of December, January and into February. If we were to experience a strong or historically strong El Nino. It is typically very bleak for snowfall, especially early in the winter for December and January, with a chance it could pick up late in the winter season. So I've analyzed the data when we've had a strong El Nino, which has occurred five times in history. We've had only 79% of our normal snowfall. Now even more rare in history, a very strong El Nino has only occurred three times in history, and that data is even more clear. Less than half the average snowfall is expected during a historically strong El Nino year. So one thing is clear, when we have an El Nino, we typically average less than average snowfall. Total snowfall, if it were to be a historically strong El Nino, would be significantly below average. And either way, with this winter season, we're expecting El Nino to have impacts with below average snowfall. Now, how about temperatures? We've recently had a very strong El Nino back in 2015 and 2016. It was one of the warmest winters in modern history, with one of the warmest starts to winter in December and no measurable snowfall and a very rare occurrence in December. Back in 1997 and 1998, it was the warmest winter we've ever had. That was also during a very strong El Nino year. And we've had several other years that have all averaged 
quite a bit above average when we experience an El Nino year. Now there are several other characteristics that will factor into a winter weather outlook, including the polar vortex. This generally speaking is a circulation over the North Pole. When the polar vortex is strong, we often see that colder air held tighter to the Arctic and the North Pole. When we enter into a weaker phase, which happens in any winter, even an El Nino winter, we would see more likely frequencies of outbreaks of cold Arctic air coming down into the mid latitudes. El Nino or not, we will have disruptions in the polar vortex that occasionally will send colder Arctic air down into our area, which could result in at least a good, few good weeks of winter. We also monitor snow cover across Canada. It is now below average, which means we don't have a breeding ground for colder air at this point early in the season. We may have to look all the way across the globe into Siberia where they're near average with snowpack for some late season cold if the pattern lines up just right. So what else influences a winter weather season. We've talked about snow cover and the polar vortex. Any winter season could be defined by, of course, hitting on the big one. One storm could define a winter season, but my big influence is going to be our general warming climate and the impacts from an El Nino winter. So here's how we're going to break it down. Our winter temperatures are expected to be above average. It could be as much as two degrees or more above average. And that's a big deal over the course of a winter season. Our winter snowfall expected to be below average in line with a typical El Nino winter somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 28 inches. Keep in mind, an average snowfall for the course of a year is about 37 inches. So we're looking at a warmer than average winter with below average snowfall. And that's what the data is going to show. Warmer conditions across our area and much of the Great Lakes region and drier than normal conditions will be experienced as well through the majority of our winter season. Yes, we will occasionally get snow that falls across the area, but the winter weather lovers that are hoping for more snow and a wintry setting may have to wait yet again another year. Reporting from a wintry studio, meteorologist Chris Vickers.